to the ballot box in six states today, including Arizona, Michigan, and in Kansas. As we reported earlier, Kansas voters will decide if the state will adopt a pro-life amendment. And joining us now is John Schweppe, Policy Director at the American Principles Project. John, welcome back. Always great to see you. Uh, as mentioned, a number of primaries today. Uh, curious, which races are you following? Well, we are looking, you know, there's several Republicans who have signed American Principles Project's big family pledge, which means they're pretty conservative and pro-family. And so we're looking to support them. Uh, we're also watching, especially Michigan 3. Uh, that's an important race because Peter Meyer, the current congressman there, actually supported a transgender rights bill. He's up against John Gibbs, a conservative uh, who did sign our pledge and who's a very strong candidate. So I think that's really important because, you know, Republicans need to understand that there are political consequences to supporting left wing bills. And so I think we'll see that tonight. Yeah, and John, the, uh, I want to talk about the value them both amendment. Um, you know, it's up for a vote in Kansas. It is the first state to bring the issue of abortion to the ballot box. What do you think will happen? I mean, how do you think this vote will shake out? It's expected to be very close. And so we just have to recognize that this is what it's like post Dobbs. I think a lot of pro-lifers, you know, for a long time, we were all fighting to overturn Roe. We finally got what we wanted, but that's just the first step. Uh, now we're going to have fights in every single state and every single community to really advocate for life. And so this is kind of the first one I want, you know, it, it could go either way. And I don't think it's a defeat necessarily. It, it, if we lose, you know, it, obviously we have more to do. And so that's what we got to do. We have to recognize that engaging the, the politics uh, voting in November, all of this is really critical to advance pro-life policies. Yeah, I want to switch uh, gears here for a moment. Uh, Twitter actually censored the conservative news site, the Epic Times, uh, labeling their tweets as potentially spam and unsafe. Uh, and, and that really drew the attention of several senators who, who pushed back on the social media giant. And now Twitter has reversed course um, and is no longer censoring the news organization. I want to get your thoughts on that. Can you help us unpack this a little bit? Yeah, well, this is a, a, a pattern of behavior for Twitter and actually all these social media companies. And again, they're suppressing journalism. We saw this in 2020 with the Hunter Biden laptop story, and that obviously had a huge impact on the results of the election. So I, I'm glad to see that Republican politicians seem to totally understand that this issue really poses a threat to our, our free and fair elections. And obviously, we're going to have to do something about it. Uh, you know, we can continue to put pressure on these companies. But ultimately, we're probably going to need legislation like Section 230 reform to uh, require these companies to adhere to the First Amendment. Yeah, John, something else I want to uh, get your take on is, you know, a number of staffers within the Biden administration uh, recently resigned, including White House Communications Director Kate Bedingfield. However, it seems she had a change of heart and is now staying on. What do you think prompted this change? Any idea? Well, that has to be one of the hardest positions to fill in the country right now. Uh, being communications director for this president, uh, for this administration is probably extremely difficult. And so, uh, you know, my guess is that they weren't able to find someone adequate to replace her and they were asked her to stay on through the election. Uh, so we'll see on that. But, you know, the reality of it is there is no message from this administration that makes sense. I mean, we look at gas prices. They're bragging right now about gas prices falling a little bit over the last month. But a month ago, two months ago, they were saying it was good that gas prices were up. And so um, I think it, they're just totally, you know, off base with their with their messaging and it's going to hurt them in November. So, John, we have probably about 30 seconds left or so, but I'm curious what else you're following. Well, I think really we're looking as Republicans go into this election, we want to see them run on pro family issues, really run on a lot of these social issues and not just talk about. I mean, inflation is the obvious issue, right? But We've been pushing the cultural issues are what's winning voters, what's winning Hispanics and all these folks who want to vote Republican. And then ultimately they got to run on it and then they got to actually govern that way. And I think we'll see that next year. So that's what APP is working on. We're really excited. All right. Well, we're going to leave it right there. Thank you so much, John. Great to be with you. Thanks so much.